Euler's equation is just f equals ma for inviscid fluids. Uh, inviscid just means that there is no viscosity. Um, and once we have the concept of the material derivative, it's actually quite easy to derive Euler's equation. If we have some blob of fluid, uh, it doesn't really matter what shape and what size, as long as it's fairly small. Um, and let's say it's in a pressure field, and this is a high pressure over here, and there's a low pressure over here. Um, we'd expect there to be a force on the fluid in that direction, acting from the high pressure towards the low pressure. Now, in fact, the force is equal to uh, minus grad P, the gradient of the pressure field, multiplied by the volume of that little fluid element. Let's think about why that is. Well, the minus sign arises because it has to be, uh, the force has to be sort of from high pressure to low pressure. And if you think about it, the normal definition of grad uh, is pointing in the, in the other direction. It points towards the area of high pressure. Um, the next thing is it really has to be in the direction of steepest gradient. And that direction is, of course, given straight away uh, by grad P, that vector. Um, now, the volume, uh, you might be wondering why it's not just multiplied by some sort of area. Well, the volume, it arises because if you think of the fluid element, or if you imagine a cylinder that's just completely aligned in the direction of minus grad P, uh, obviously it's going to increase as the cross-sectional area increases, A, but also um, the force between this point here, this face here, and this face here also depends on the length of this element here. Multiply the two together, and you get the volume. Uh, so that's why you see a volume term appearing here. I'm going to rub out that last bit and start again from just underneath the axes. So we're thinking once again of this blob of fluid here. Um, the force, well, that's of course the force on the blob. And what we've actually done here is express it in terms of the pressure field. Note we've got the force on the blob here, expressed in terms of the field here. Um, now what we want to do is to write F equals MA. And again, we're thinking in terms of the blob. So now let's think about the force on the blob, the mass of the blob, by the, and the acceleration of the blob. And so we can write A as dV by dt, where once again that V is the velocity of the blob. Now, this is where the, we use the material derivative. Let's expect, uh, express everything in terms of the, the field. So, <coughs> the force in terms of the field we worked out at the top here. It's minus grad P times the volume of the blob equals the mass of the blob. Now, this will be the density at that point in the field times the volume of the blob. And then the velocity of the blob expressed in terms of the field is simply done with the material derivative dv by dt, where now all the terms in this last equation are expressed in terms of the field properties. Now let's divide through by the volume on both sides. We're going to get minus grad p equals rho, and then expanding out d by dt, we're going to get curly dv of the field by dt plus v of the field dot grad v again of the field all in brackets and this is in fact usually rearranged to give <coughs> dv by dt plus v dot grad v I'll just put the vectors in uh, is equal to minus one upon rho grad p and that is Euler's equation and to recap this is just the acceleration uh, of the fluid blob this is like 1 over the mass uh, per unit volume, and this here is the force per unit volume. And we can see straight away we just get F equals MA there. We can get quite a lot of physical insight about fluid flow from the process that we've just been through. Um, let's start by looking at a straight streamline. It doesn't have to be straight, but it's a little bit easier if it is straight for this analysis. Um, and let's imagine a fluid blob at point A uh, moving in that direction ending up at point B. And let's further on imagine that at point A we have a high pressure, and at point B we have a low pressure. 
So you can tell that due to the pressure there'll be a force and hence an acceleration uh, from left to right. And that means, of course, that uh, at A you'll have a lower velocity than you will at B. So let's call B a high velocity and A a low velocity and the pressure gradient has caused from high to low, the pressure gradient has caused an acceleration from A to B. So this gives us the result that sometimes seems a bit strange when we start fluids that things with high pressure uh, correspond to low velocity and then a high velocity corresponds to a low pressure. You can see that arising very naturally um, just out of F equals MA. It's, uh, it's quite easy to see when you look at it like this. Um, also now if you would actually integrate uh, the force times the distance from A to B then you get Bernoulli's equation. And it's interesting to see that Bernoulli is just a sort of integrated Euler equation. Um, of course, when you integrate a force over a distance, you get an energy, so you can also think of Bernoulli as a sort of energy equation. It's um, an equation for mechanical energy. Um, its nearest equivalent, when you add compressibility, is the steady flow energy equation. And another interesting thing to point out is that if you have a curved streamline like that, let's think of a blob moving along a curved streamline, well, because its motion is curving, we know there must be an acceleration in that direction. So again, you can tell straight away that you must have, on this side of the streamline, a high pressure. On this side of the streamline, a low pressure. So you can relate uh, streamline curvature to a pressure gradient in the cross-stream direction.